You all see the slide at home? Do you see it? Yes? Okay. Okay, we're gonna begin our worship service this morning. Uh, welcome everyone for those who are in the sanctuary right now and also those who are joining us online at this time. I see Susan, Terry and Paul online. Okay, and maybe the others as well joining us later. Uh, but this is our second Sunday after Epiphany. Um, it's our uh, today we are also having our annual congregational um, meeting, our annual meeting, always on the third week of uh, January. Um, I was, you know, I remember always that Ray always record the uh, the weather on that day, <laughs> but. He always thought that it's a frigid, cold day in the January, but not not as much today. So, uh, but we are blessed that the uh, you know, the weather is nice today, and uh, we hope that you'll uh, proceed without any uh, issues. So, uh, we uh, our annual meeting will begin after our service. Maybe take a couple minute break, and then we'll, we're going to start. Okay. So, welcome uh, to our worship service this morning. Please join our hearts and our mind for the worship of God. Please join me for the call to worship by responding in the yellow portion. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the story, glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. <clears throat> Let us pray. Holy God, you sent your son to be the light of the world so that all may know the brightness of your love. Fill us with your grace this day that we too may bear witness to his life and serve your coming reign. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our opening hymn is number 408. There is a sweet, sweet spirit. I, I've asked Brian to play this song once, so uh, I remember we sang this once, we sang this song before, but it may not be as familiar, so I'm going to ask Brian to play the song once, and then we'll come in, okay? There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are 
our sweet expression on each face. And I know they feel the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet Heavenly Dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for these blessings, we lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. There are blessings you cannot receive till you know Him in His fullness and believe. You're the one to profit when we say, I am going to walk with Jesus on the way. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for these blessings, we lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> The reason why I picked this song to, uh, to, our, uh, to begin our service, um, this weekend, as you know, is also a Martin Luther King's weekend. Uh, this is a very uh, popular African-American spiritual hymn. So if, if you go to any other um, uh, African-American churches, this is a familiar song that they sing. So I uh, just wanna introduce that to you all. And it fits the theme very nicely in terms of the Holy Spirit and in the season of Epiphany. Friends, let us come before God to, in the confessions of our sins. Our Lord is merciful and gracious. He is present with us, even when we have strayed from his path of righteousness. In the confidence of God's faithfulness, let us confess our sins to God. For the Holy One is steadfast in love, and always ready to forgive. Let, it read, let us read the prayer of confession in unison. Merciful God, we have chased after foolish things and spent our strength on vanity. Our labor has been in vain. Deliver us from arrogance and forgive our self-concern that we may find our benevolence with you. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Beloved, you are forgiven in Christ, the Lamb who bears our sins. Happy are those who put their trust in God and delight to do God's will. For God makes our footing sure upon the rock of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Friends, the light has 
the light of Christ has shined upon us in the midst of darkness. Let us go forth and share this peace of Christ and the light of the Holy Spirit with one another. Let us turn to our neighbor and exchange signs of peace and love with one another. <clears throat> Our first reading today comes from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, the church in Corinth, first chapter, verses 1 to 9. Listen to the word of God. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sustine, Sustine to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who are in, who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and our, ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you, because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and in knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gifts as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. For God is faithful. By him, you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 29 to 42. It's a continuation of the, this passage that we, we were reading last week uh, of Jesus' baptism. So uh, it's a continuation of that. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and he declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came, baptizing with water, for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. Look, here's the, the Lamb of God. The, two, the disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher. Where are you staying? And Jesus said to them, Come and see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was, it was about four o'clock in the afternoon. 
one of then one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated as the anointed. Then he brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which means Peter. Friends, this is the word of the Lord for us this morning. Thanks be to God. In the gospel lessons that we just read from John, Jesus was approached by two of John's disciples who had been following him since the day of his baptism. They were probably still amazed and stunned by what they witnessed the day before by the river. As the heavenly dove descended from above and the voice of the Holy Spirit declared Jesus as the Son of God. Although we're not there, to we're not totally sure, perhaps there was still that slight element of doubt or curiosity among the many witnesses, including these two disciples. They wanted to see more convincing proof in order for them to believe. Chances are that we would probably have done the same as well. Jesus turned around and asked them, what are you looking for? This is a rather odd question asked by Jesus, don't you think? And the disciples replied, where are you staying, Rabbi? But it's already around four o'clock in the afternoon, it's getting late, and these disciples were curious about where Jesus was staying for the night. Or perhaps have supper with them. But we're not sure if these two disciples were considering offering a place for him to stay, or perhaps they were just wanted to spend more time with Jesus. They wanted to come to know Jesus more. Jesus kind of knew what was on their mind, so they turned, he turned to him and asked, and extended this invitation, said, come and see. Those two disciples of John did go and see where Jesus was staying, and they decided to stay with him for the rest of the day. We assume that they did not, they did get to spend more time with him. For the evening, before committing their lives to him as his disciples, and let's pause, here, let's pause here for a moment, because that's a lot that we, can, we need to digest this. Through this simple exchange between Jesus and these two disciples. Jesus extended an open invitation to these disciples. An invitation for a deeper and more personal relationship leading them to a commitment to follow. This was a life-changing moment for these disciples. But Jesus was willing to make himself available for these disciples in order to spend more time with them. So he said, come and see for yourself. In the same way, this is an open invitation for anyone who wishes to enter into this covenant relationship with Christ. Furthermore, these disciples' commitment to follow demonstrated their courage and faith that ultimately led them to Christ. And in turn, they would lead others as well. 
They were willing to drop everything in order to follow Jesus. Once they recognized him as the true Messiah. Now that they have experienced and encountered Jesus personally, they quickly went to share and tell others about it. Just as we read last week, when the wise men came to visit the Messiah child, they went back and shared the good news and to tell others about it. The moment Andrew declared his faith and allegiance to follow Christ, he went to look for his brother, Simon. That just seems natural, don't you think? That when you, if you find something new or exciting or some special bargain in a store, you want to tell other people about it and not just keep it to ourselves. After finding his brother, Simon, Andrew then went to look for his other friend, Philip. And then Philip, in turn, went to find his friend, Nathaniel. Although Nathaniel had some doubts, he said, can anything good out of, coming out of Nazareth? Is there anything good out of, coming out of it? One by one, these disciples spread the words to their friends as they, as they found the Messiah and decided to follow. Philip was not discouraged by some of the responses of, of his friends, including you know, Nathaniel. Instead, he offered them the same response that Jesus gave them. He says, come, come and see. Come check us out. If you have any doubt of why we believe Jesus is the real deal. He is the true Messiah that we've been waiting for. So what about us? What, what are we looking for? What were the disciples, what were the disciples looking for in Jesus anyway? Were they just curious about Jesus or have still have some doubts within them in order for them to follow? Did they want to see more evidence, more proof and miracles in order for them to believe? I think these are questions that we need to ask ourselves as well. What are we looking for when we declare our faith by coming to follow Christ? What are you looking for this morning as you come to worship God? If someone asks you, why do you believe what you believe? How would you respond? Or from a more practical level, what are we looking for whenever we come? Come to this place to worship God. Do we only call upon God when we need something from God or when, when we're facing various trials and crises in our life? For those of us who have been uh, on our Bible studies on Wednesday, we look into some of these Psalms that have been written under different circumstances. We, we, we talked about this, that the, the Psalms, the psalmist declare his faith and allegiance in the midst of imminent danger, crisis, and distress, but also whenever they feel, he feels blessed and, and declare his joy and thanksgiving, he felt inspired to write these songs, responding to God. That's his way of communicating back to God. Where does our heart lie when we are seeking to spend more quality time with God? Do we lay aside our worldly distraction while keeping our minds and our focus upon God and God alone? When Jesus asked us, what are you looking for? He's asking unconditionally for our spiritual discipline and allegiance. 
Are we giving him our fullest attention or our total commitments before him? Or our minds may be somewhere else as we are too busy and too occupied with our lives every day that we don't spend enough time with God. Perhaps some of us may be looking for a deeper sense of spiritual grounding, yearning and belonging. Some of us may be lost right now and not sure where we stand spiritually. And that's understandable. Some of us may have this deep spiritual longing, desire to know Christ more. Not just knowing about Christ, but knowing Christ personally and allowing ourselves to be known by God and be vulnerable to God. For God knows us inside and out and knows exactly what's on our mind right now. Wherever we are, I think Jesus' response would satisfy us all in many ways. He said, come and see. Come and see. As I shared with you last week, when we declare our faith and our commitment in Christ through our baptism, it's just the beginning of a lifelong journey. We are in for the long haul. It's a marathon, not a sprint towards the finish line. We will be expecting to see and face various trials and testings through our life. But God is more interested in developing and nurturing our a lifelong relationship with us rather than something that will satisfy our momentary worldly desires. When Jesus called us to come and see, he's not interested in some long term, uh, short term head knowledge. You could Google that yourself. You could find out all this information. But he wants us to yearn for this long term heart knowledge. What's inside that will never be taken away from us? It's not just a test that you will take and pass. But you didn't learn anything from it. You may pass the course, you may, you know, but you didn't learn anything. It's discipleship, Christian, Christian discipleship is not like that. It's not simply about knowing who Jesus is, but about knowing Jesus on a deeper, a more personal level. As we develop the same mind, in the same parts with Christ. But rest assured that we are never alone through this whole process. Just as Jesus called not only the 12 elite apostles, but as there are many other disciples and supporters and followers as well. These disciples would shoulder one another's burdens by encouraging and motivating one another. They will pick each other up when somebody fails. No one should think that he or she can run this race alone. Each should lend his or support, his or her support to one another in order to strengthen the body of Christ. They may have their shares of differences, but that's understandable. But they must be willing to surrender themselves to one another in order to fulfill the greater purpose and the mission of God. Just like many of these disciples who became close friends, they spend more quality time with God. They pray for each other. They share meals with one another. As we read in our passage from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, Paul remember his fellow brothers and sisters in his prayers, even though some of them he had never met. 
he expressed his desire to be with them in spite of his physical confinement. Paul lifted them up in his prayers by acknowledging their common bond and spiritual calling through Christ. Paul encouraged the early church to exercise their individual gifts as offered by the Spirit constructively for the greater purpose, the mission of the body of Christ. Furthermore, Christ has reminded us also that we are all gifted individually with various capacities to serve. As we wait for the spiritual gift that is upon us, Christ has called us to exercise our energy, our gifts of intelligence, imagination, and love for one another. But through our spiritual humility, as John did, when he was willing to step aside to make ways for Christ to be glorified, God commanded us to humble ourselves and place ourselves a little less for the sake of the greater good of the body in which we are called. The less we are, the more of Christ and the body of Christ. When we extend Christ's invitations of come and see to others through our humble and servile attitude, we come to see the world through a different lens, through God's perspective, not ours. We come to seek the common good of all rather than our own personal interests and desires. Instead of leading from the front line, it's okay if we are called to take the lesser role by following the examples of Christ as we lead from behind, as a servant. Through Christ's moments of epiphany, God came among us and enabled us to see the ultimate fruits of God's greater plan of salvation for humankind. No longer do we need to keep searching for ourselves, for Christ ourselves, like the disciples did. For God is with us. God is through us, in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. Friends, let us therefore come and see, but more importantly, go and tell. Serve the Lord through our service to others. All this we do through the power of the one who sent us as bearers of the light of Christ and witnesses to the world. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now respond by singing hymn number 279. Come, Holy Spirit, heavenly dove. <clears throat> Our foremost songs, in faith we 
strive to rise. Hosanna's language on our tongues, and our devotion dies. Dear Lord, then shall we ever live at this poor dying race. Our love so fades, so cold to thee, and thine to us so great. Come, Holy Spirit, heavenly dove, with all thy quickly house. Come, shed abroad a Savior's love. And that shall kindle out. Amen. Please be seated. Now it's time that we'll do a little check-in with one another. If you if you want to have any share any prayer requests or prayer of thanksgiving, you may do so as well. So uh, I'm going to turn up my share screen at this time, and I think you see some faces there. Um, anybody who's online right now would like to say a few words if you want. You don't have to if you don't have to, if you don't want. Uh, yeah, please, you may unmute if you don't. Okay, Terry. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you for having me in church with my church family. Bind us together, keep us in strength and purity in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thanks, Terry. Anyone else? Okay. Um, how about those who are in the sanctuary right now? Uh, yes, Stephen? Uh, Rosie is the one with the uh, the cancer. Yes, stroke. Oh, stroke. Okay. Okay. Any other other prayer requests? Pray up Thanksgiving and joy. Yes, no. Friends, let us um, let's let's spend a little you know time alone together um, and just to listen to what God has to say to us. I know, I, as I mentioned before, that oftentimes we get distracted by by things around us, and I think you know some of you have expressed that you know whenever you come here, you find a moment of peace, and I hope that you may find that uh, when you are here and not be distracted by you know, the people around you or the noises that may be around you. And, and let's, let's come to God in God's presence. Let us pray. Holy God, you called us to be still and know that you are God. Whenever we are in your presence, we know that you are here. Keep our hearts focused and our minds focused upon you and you alone. Let us put aside our, our worldly issues that we may face and, and come to you, Lord, and reminding us, Lord, that this is a cherished time that we have together that we spend more time with you make this a, a devotion of our hearts 
of this new year that we approach. Lord, we thank you for this community whom you've gathered and called. And wherever we are, we know that we are in your presence. Continue to strengthen us and keep us uh, strong. And even though some of us may be at different places and we know that we are united in one spirit. Strengthen our body and for those who, are, who may be weak, those who may be sick, those who may have experiencing difficult time as well. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to remind us of your presence in us. Lord, we pray, Lord, for the, those who are uh, in need of your strength at this time. We lift up, uh, we lift up Stephen's uh, brother-in-law, uh, Michael Houston, as he is dealing with uh, some health issues ongoing, and we pray that uh, each day that he will be able to make some progress. And also for uh, Stephen's niece, Taylor, as she is uh, faced with various trials and uh, difficult trials in her life as well. We pray that you would help her to make the right decisions uh, in her life as well. We, we pray for Stephen's friend, Rosie, Rosie Weinstein, as she is recovering from her stroke. Lord, we know that uh, this is a, a long pro progress as she recovers, as she's recovering from her stroke, and we pray that she'll be able to receive the, the right medical attention that she needs and be able to um, regain uh, some of her, her skills back after the stroke. Be with those around her as well, and um, that they may provide the need, the medical attention that she needs. Lord, we lift up all these, as well as the prayers of concerns that we may cherish in our hearts, for we know that you heal us. You know, you know our thoughts, you know our minds, even when they're not spoken, but you know our hearts. We thank you for your, for this privilege of knowing you and you knowing us. All of this, Lord, we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> now is the time for announcements and um, just, uh, just a reminder, please uh, drop off your offering at the back table uh, late after the service and there's an offering plate in the back. So please, you may do so as well. Uh, you may also uh, make your offering online um, through the QR code and the website. You can make your contribution that way as well or send the check to our treasurer. Immediately, immediately after our service today, uh, we'll probably take a few minutes break and then uh, we will convene back to this space and we will conduct our annual congregational meeting. Um, so, uh, so hopefully we'll, the sooner we start, the sooner we'll be able to get it done. And I'm looking to finish maybe in about half an hour, maybe 40 minutes. You should. Yeah. Uh, our Wednesday Bible study will be continue at 7.30 on Wednesday. Uh, we've been studying, reading the, uh, the book of Psalms and uh, we're reading various kinds of Psalms. I think there are more categories there there are and i think as we look into each one we'll, we'll see uh, the different types of psalms written by different psalmists as well so um, and I, I think we've been getting uh, some good reflection on that the last couple of weeks so 
Any other uh, announcements before we? Uh, yes, Ray. Uh, I do have extra hard copies of the annual report. <clears throat> Okay, you have them, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, just want to repeat what he said that the uh, for those who are staying for the annual congregational meeting, uh, he uh, Ray has printed out the report um, that I have emailed to you uh, earlier this week. Um, so hopefully you had a chance to read it. And then so we can expedite our meeting time together. Um, so he has printed out about 10 copies or so. And um, so if you need a copy, uh, please uh, ask him for that. Um, he will, he will, he'll distribute it later on. Okay? Friends, let us then conclude our worship this morning by singing hymn number 353. Our heart, uh, our hope is built on nothing less. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I did not trust the sweetest spring, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, on other ground is sinking sand. Hold on the ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every hide and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On oh, Christ the solid, Rock I stand, hold on the ground is sinking sand. Hold on the ground is sinking sand. His hope is covered, and his blood support me in the well-being flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and strength. On Christ the solid rock I stand, hold on the ground is sinking sand. Hold on the ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may thy den in him be found, rest in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all for the ground is sinking sand, all on the ground is sinking sand. Amen. <clears throat> Friends, may God's steadfast love and mercy lead you and make your steps secure, keeping you forever safe on the path of righteousness and peace. Friends, you have come and see, so let us now go and tell tell of God's presence in this world. Tell that he is the waiting Messiah, long-awaited Messiah in our life. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And all God's people say, Amen.
May God confirm your heart's desire and bring to fullness all your plans. May God sustain, may love inspire your shouts of praise and joyful dance. Friends, may you have a blessed week and be a blessing to others. If you need to use the bathroom, you may do so. Um, you know, but try to stick around if you can, and we'll the moment the sooner we start, the sooner we can finish this meeting. Okay.